What's up guys? Today I'm going to show you how I grill steaks. You guys have been asking a lot of questions. How do I grill my steaks? What do I do to them to get them to look so awesome? So today I'm going to share that with you guys. We're going to go through the process for uh, making a huge porterhouse. It's going to be awesome. It's going to be super good. And uh, we're going to go through that and the whole method, guys. I used to do charcoal and just grill my steaks straight. But I switched over to sous vide because it just saves me so much time and it turns out literally perfect every time. But you can grill it. Or you can do the sous vide if you don't have one, but you guys can check out the process of how I make my steaks and let me know what you think and then uh, we'll go from there. Let's start this guy. Alright guys, so this is the sous vide cooker I got. I got the Anova one, um, the 800 watt. It only has a Bluetooth, not the Wi-Fi. If I had to do it over again, I'd probably get the Wi-Fi edition because then I could just, uh, you know, turn it on remotely. Like I could get it all prepped. Uh, in the morning before I go to work and then I could start it from my phone remotely so it'd be done at a specific time because the Bluetooth you can only do uh, if you're in Bluetooth range so that's just one one little thing if you're looking at picking one up but I think I got it for maybe a hundred and twenty dollars off Amazon uh, and then I picked up like this KitchenAid uh, 12, 12 quart tub and it's got a lid for it and everything so you know, all together, maybe around $150, but I'm sure you, if you shop around, you probably find them for cheaper than that. Uh, but it's really basic. So if you guys aren't familiar with sous vide, basically what this does is it heats up and circulates the water to a specific temperature. Uh, so we'll put our steak in here, uh, sealed in a bag, and then it's gonna just cook it basically from every angle at the exact temperature and doneness that we want our steak. So. I usually do 129 degrees, which ends up being about medium rare. Uh, so we just fill this up with water and then prep our steak and put it in here and let it go for about, I usually do two hours for a steak the size that we're gonna do today, but it, it works out absolutely amazing, guys. So you can just set it and forget it. Just turn the water up as hot as it'll go, guys, and then just fill the tub. And you really just wanna fill it up to uh, as much as gonna cover the meat. You can go higher, you can fill this all the way if you want, but it's not really necessary. And make sure to leave room for the displacement um, as you add the meat, it's gonna increase the water level too. Put the lid on the sous vide, we got some hot water in here. And then we're just gonna go ahead and put this on the edge of the container like that. Nova's pretty nice, it's got a, you can control it from the app or it's just got like basically a mouse wheel to set the temp. So we wanna turn it to one, uh, 29 is what I'm going to cook this at and then just hit the button and it will start heating the water up and then it'll go ahead and beep once it hits the 129 uh, set temp. So there we go. I guess the water I had in there was hot enough or actually slightly hotter. I'm all about the meat so we got to get a good steak. I really like porterhouses, ribeyes, all kinds of stuff like that. I went to the butcher's yesterday, picked up a really nice porterhouse look at that one guys porterhouse is, is one of my favorite cuts this is about a two inch maybe two and a half inch thick uh porterhouse but just a just a monster monster piece of meat here guys always look for that nice marbling and and fat in there so this this works really good uh one of my favorite cuts to do so we're gonna do up this porterhouse today guys and what i don't know if you guys know this but a little little meat info what makes it a porterhouse the t-bone and a porterhouse are really the same cut one just comes from further back the porterhouse has a larger piece of the tenderloin and then the strip side so you'll notice on a t-bone the tenderloin side is going to be a lot smaller i forget the exact i think maybe like in has to be an inch and a quarter uh for it to be considered a porterhouse but Really, the porterhouse just has a bigger piece of tenderloin on that side. Uh, this is what I'm gonna use, guys, and this is a big, thick cut, uh, so we're gonna put it in there for about two hours. You don't really have to season it that much, guys, because with the sous vide, basically, it's trapped in there and cooking with its own juices and flavors, so I'll put a little bit of salt and pepper on it, and then we're gonna go ahead and vacuum seal it with a food saver. Put a pink Himalayan salt on here, and some crushed black pepper. I'm gonna place this monster steak in a uh, food saver bag here. Uh, pro tip, if you fold the sides over on the food saver, it makes it so uh, you get that good seal on there and the edges won't get dirty. So I'm just gonna put it in here and we're gonna vacuum seal all the air out. Uh, if you don't have a food saver, you can just use a, a big Ziploc bag and that's gonna work just the same for the sous vide. You don't have to have a food saver vacuum sealer. You can just use a, a large Ziploc bag, put it in there, and when you, when you put it in the sous vide, just drape it over the sides. There we go, guys, all vacuum sealed up. Nice, huge 
porterhouse steak. So now we can go ahead and put it into the sous vide bath and start cooking it. Water's all preheated, so I'm just gonna go ahead and take the steak and put it into the water bath, uh, and it will just sink right to the bottom. Again, if you guys don't have a food saver, you can just put them in a large Ziploc bag and then drape the zip side of the bag over the edge here and put the lid on it and it'll just hold it in there. Uh, if you can't quite get all the air out, uh, I have some racks to kind of set my stuff on in there. You can take, um, or you can take a weight or anything kind of metal and heavy and just kind of put it on top to make sure that it doesn't float up at all while it's cooking, but it generally doesn't happen. So. This is really all set guys. We're just gonna leave this in here at this temp for about uh, two hours and then we'll come back and check on the steak and I'll show you guys how to finish it. Guys, so the porterhouse has been going for about two hours now at uh, 129, so it should be perfectly uh, medium rare. So what we're gonna do, we're gonna go outside, fire up the charcoal, because we still have to sear it at the end. And uh, so let's go get that charcoal started and I'll show you guys what I use. I used to finish it off. This is just a Weber uh, charcoal chimney that I got off Amazon for like 20 bucks. And then I just fill it about half full uh, and I'm using just lump, uh, lump charcoal, regular hardwood lump charcoal. So we just fill up the charcoal chimney. And then what I got here is a little grate that goes uh, right on top. I got this on Amazon too for like eight bucks. So it fits right on top. And then we just get the highest possible heat to do the sear. And literally, um, once we put the steak on here, it's it's gonna take like less than a minute to sear it. And cause all we need is that finishing touch with the sous vide because it doesn't get that awesome sear on there that makes the steak so freaking awesome. So this gives it all the grilled flavor uh, and it literally takes a second. So we just have to start the, uh, the charcoal all right, so I'll get the charcoal lit, guys. It's literally going to take about 15 minutes, and these are going to be all ready. And then uh, we can just throw the steak on there, sear it up, and it's going to be done literally that quick. The steak's all ready. I'm going to go ahead and pull it out of the water bath here. One of the nice things about sous vide is because it cooks in its own juices, now we have all these juices in the bag uh, still, so we can use that for other stuff. I actually got some mushrooms I'm sauteing right behind me. Uh, so I'm going to take some of this beef juice and pour it in there to deglaze the pan and it just makes the mushrooms a million times better. So there we go guys. I know it kind of looks nasty right now, but believe me, it's, it's perfectly medium rare. The whole steak, 129 degrees. The end process here is we're just gonna sear it uh, to give it that awesome look and awesome outside burnt, uh, charred, grilled, steak flavor. This is a secret ingredient or what I like to rub my steak with. This is hardcore carnivore black. Uh, it's an activated charcoal rub that you put on your steak. It's absolutely awesome guys. Uh, it tastes really good. Uh, it gives that great burnt crust on there uh, and it just it's, it's the my favorite seasoning for steaks right now. So you can order it from hardcorecarnivore.com uh, but believe me it's absolutely worth it guys. It's so good. Uh, so I'm gonna go ahead and sprinkle this on the steak. And with sous vide that they recommend is that you uh, pat the outside of it dry. That will get you a better sear uh, on the steak when we go to sear it. So I'm just gonna pat the outside. Ooh, almost had a little catastrophe. Just pat the outside of it dry uh, in the sides with a paper towel. Just kind of get it dried off. And then we're gonna apply the seasoning. And again, if you don't wanna use seasoning, uh, you don't have to. Usually I apply the seasonings a little bit uh, while it's cooking and then more after. But we're just gonna go ahead and I'll put on that hardcore carnivore black. And as you guys can see, that activated charcoal <laughs> gives it that black crust. And if I was just gonna grill this without the sous vide, uh, a steak this size, guys, what I typically do for the charcoal is uh, I let the coals get hot and I spread them out and I do about half uh, or I have a, a side that's high heat with the coal stacked up higher and then I have a side with lower heat and because this is about a two, two and a half inch thick steak uh, really you want to do it on the high heat side for about four minutes a side and then put it on the low heat side for about six minutes a side and that will get it about uh, medium, medium rare for a steak this size. But with the sous vide the whole steak's already medium rare we just have to blaze the outside here. So this is now coated in the hardcore carnivore black and as soon as the coals are ready, we'll be good. The mushrooms go in here that I'm gonna have with it. And remember I said the juices from the bag, uh, that's just all awesome, delicious juice. So I put that in with the mushrooms, so we'll reduce that down and uh, get these seared 
mushrooms and it's gonna be so good guys the coals are all heated up believe me guys that is super hot so we're gonna get the the perfect sear on top of here this isn't gonna take long at all so remember the steaks already cooked perfectly we just want to get that sear on the outside so we put it on there and we're gonna go ahead and let it get that awesome sear sear up quick guys too and as the fat burns and drips down in there you might get some flame up so I if it gets too flamed up I'll pull the steak off real quick uh, and then let it do the other side all right guys so I'm gonna go ahead and give it a flip and this thing is a beast take it and flip it on its side so we can make sure that we really sear the fat on there. Whew. <laughs> See what I'm talking about? The flame ups, guys. Guys, so that's all done. We're gonna go ahead and bring that inside. Perfectly grilled porterhouse, and I guarantee that thing is perfectly medium rare inside. So that's what's that's what's awesome about that rub. It gives it that great char, and searing with the super high heat just sears everything immediately. Doesn't cook the meat anymore. So when we cut that open, it's gonna be perfectly medium rare. Let's go ahead and cut this thing up. Just follow along the bone. So again, if you want it done more or done less, guys, you just set your sous vide to a higher temp and it will cook it completely through uh, exactly the temp that you want. So as you guys see, we got the tenderloin side and then we got the strip side. And if you guys take a look at those strips inside, just perfectly cut. And the tender one is just so tender, guys. It's like falling apart when I'm cutting it. There you guys go. That's how I cook my steaks. The most perfect steaks every time. Go ahead and make some of that steak sauce. Uh, link in the description for my steak sauce, guys. That goes so good with this. You're going to love it. But I highly recommend the Hardcore Carnivore Black. That's how I get that awesome outer dark crust with a super high heat uh, sear from the charcoal chimney, but they come out perfect every time, guys. Edge to edge pink, medium rare, absolutely awesome. So that's how I do my steaks, guys. How do you do yours? Thanks for watching, peace.